Hi, Joanna Colucci here with your 5-minute farm doc daily about the possibility of a third consecutive La Nina event and its possible impacts on soybean yields. It's not uncommon to see La Nina occurring over two consecutive seasons. However, it's rare to see La Nina events three years in a row. But what could this mean for soybean production in the United States, Brazil, and Argentina? First, let's get a better understanding of what the La Nina phenomenon is. During La Nina events, conditions in South America favor increased precipitation across northern Brazil and decreased rainfall amounts in Argentina and southern Brazil. In the United States, weather than normal conditions are usually found in the Pacific Northwest and the Midwest. The Pacific Ocean has been in a La Nina phase for the last two years, first from August 2020 to April 2021, and then starting again in August 2021 and continue until now. There's a 59% chance that La Nina will continue into the Northern Hemisphere summer from June to August 2022, and a 55% chance it will continue into the Southern Hemisphere summer from September to January 2022. This could be the third consecutive La Nina for the first time in two decades. To try to predict what to expect from soybean yields in this year, we use descriptive analysis of deviations from the trend line of soybean yields over the last 30 years in Brazil, the United States, and Argentina, the three largest producers and exporters of soybeans in the world. Let's start with Brazil. This figure shows the relationship between El Niño and La Niña episodes and soybean yield levels. The black line is the trend line for the period. The dashed gray lines are plus or minus one residual standard deviation from the trend line. Note that five out of six very high yield levels happened in La Niña crop years. Two out of five very low yield levels happened in La Nina crop years, two in El Nino and one in neutral. And in the last time that three consecutive La Ninas happened in 2001, the yields were 12% above than the trend line. This disparity can be explained by climate difference within Brazil and the wide distribution of soybean across the country. In this current season, for example, while the central and northern states had a record-breaking harvest favored by the rain, southern Brazil has gone deep into drought. So, it's not possible to see a strong relationship between La Nina episodes and soybean yield levels in Brazil. Now, see the difference in the graph from Argentina. The majority of the red dots yields in El Nino years are above the trend line. And the majority of blue dots yields in La Nina years are below the trend line. For example, the last two La Nina episodes did, didn't generate extremely low yields. However, in both cases, the yields were below the trend line by three bushels per acre. In these two crop seasons, precipitation was below average in some parts of the Pampa region, which provides 95% of soybean production in the country. If we focus on extreme values, you can see that 5 out of 6 very high yield levels happen in El Nino crop years. Also, 3 out of 4 very low yield levels happen in La Nina crop years. This data suggests that it's unlikely to have very high yields during La Nina and very low yields during El Nino. Finally, let's take a look at the trend line in the United States. 
The last two La Nina harvests in 2020 and 2021, soybean yields were above the trend line by 1.4 and 1.5 bushels per acre. And the last time that three consecutive La Ninas happened in 2001, the yields were 2% below the trend line. There's a slight relationship between the phenomenon and soybean yield levels in the United States, with the majority of yields in El Niño years above the trend line. If we focus on extreme values, you can see that two out of three very high yield levels happen during El Niño and one during La Niña. Also, three out of four very low yield levels happen in neutral years, and only one during La Nina. This shows a weak effect of El Nino and La Nina on American soybean yields. So, in summary, over the last 30 years, the data show a strong relationship between El Nino and La Nina episodes and soybean yields levels in Argentina a weaker relationship in the United States, and no relationship in Brazil. It's important to highlight that each La Nina event is different, so the prediction of the impacts on soybean yields is not easy. You can read more about this topic in an article written by me, Silvina Cabrini, and Gary Shinitik. A link is in the description of this video. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to get new video updates. See you next time!